Namaste, my name is François Gauthier. I'm a French journalist and writer. I live in India. I have the privilege to live in your great country and I'm married to an Indian. Today I want to talk about karma and terrorism. The two words seem to be contradictory and yet they have a very deep and uh, far-reaching link. Now this is India, most of you are Indians, so you know what karma is. Uh, it is not sin in the Christian sense. Karma is any action as a consequence in this life or in the next one or in the next one. You have to believe in reincarnation. I think Buddhists and uh, Christians do. Uh, Christians used to believe in reincarnation till about the 7th century and the church, actually a Roman emperor, made it uh, uh, compulsory not to believe in reincarnation. So reincarnation is a very important uh, uh, tenet because it allows you to know that you live from life to life and this is not the end. You, know, you not, don't have one life and then it's over. You go to paradise or purgatory or hell. You live from life to life and you reborn again and again. This is a great me message of the Bhagavad, the Bhagavad Gita. Now, there is also a collective karma, the karma of a nation. The Dalai Lama himself and I, I have interviewed him many times and I'm very fond of the Dalai Lama. I think he's one of the great yogis of the 21st century. Unfortunately, we don't know whether he will be the last Dalai Lama, but that's another story. He said that Tibet today is living a black karma. Tibet as a nation is living the black karma at the hands of the Chinese. You know, about one million Tibetan died since Mao Zedong invaded Tibet in 1959. One million Tibetans died violently, either directly or indirectly, uh, since 1959. And it's a lot because Tibet is a very small nation. There are only six million people. And as you know, they are in exile. Most of the Tibetan Lamas came uh, to India and live in exile in India. Now, the Dalai Lama said that we, the Tibetans, are living a black karma today because we exploited the ordinary people. There was a feudalism in Tibet till, you know, till uh, the 20th century. And, and the, the Rinpoche, the Lamas, you know, didn't care about the small people. They exploited the small people. And as a result, they, today they have to live a black, black karma. Now, so it's important to understand that a nation has a karma. If you look at Europe, for instance, and this is the link with Islam and with Islamic terrorism. If you look at Europe, for instance, most of European nations colonize African or other countries. My country, France, colonized most of North Africa, Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, etc. You know, in those days, in the 18th century, 17th century, uh, 19th, in a very violent manner, they exploited the people, you know, they were violent against the people, they killed people, they hanged people. Also, there was an exploitation uh, with colonization. And even when colonization was over, again in my country, France, in the 50s, 60s, we imported cheap Arab labor because the French didn't want to pick up you know, trash and do big coolies. So we imported cheap Arab labor and these labor were looked down upon. When I was a kid, uh, you know, the kids used to speak in a very uh, you know, negative and uh, making fun of these Arabs. We call them Biko, which is a word saying like dirty Arab. So if today I am the great grandson of one of these Arabs, or you know, the great great grandson of one of the colonized uh, uh, North Africans, I have an anger towards the French, the, the white French. You know, I have an anger, and that, that anger is justified. You know, my, my people were exploited, they were killed, they were hanged. Uh, so I have an anger. If I'm not educated, if I'm a French Muslim but not educated, my anger gets into violence. You know, I start writing and against the French people, the white people, you know, I write against the police. So, so this violence is there. I'm not saying the violence is justified, but it's a karmic violence. You know. so, so France today is paying the karma of this colonization, of this exploitation of the Arab, it is paying the karma. Now, the Arab, the Muslims who are violently, uh, you know, who are violently against France, who, who are showing violence against France, they, in their turn, they're creating a black karma for themselves as a collective body, you know, as Algerians, as Tunisians, and one day they will have to pay that karma. So this is very important to understand that each nation has a karma and this karma has a repercussion in this life or the other. 
And it is said, you know, Buddhist said, the Dalai Lama himself said, that, that a people is reborn mostly again in the same ethnic. You know, like if you're a Tibetan today, there's a good chance that when you die, you again reborn a Tibetan. If you're a Muslim, there's a good chance that you're again reborn a Muslim. So that karma is lived from life to life. Now, as far as Israel is concerned, the Israeli people have suffered terribly. Not only today, we've seen the atrocities that Hamas did on the 7th of October 2023, you know, burning children in ovens, uh, raping women, killing them. Oh, the most horrible terror that you can imagine from the medieval time. Now, Israel suffered also throughout the ages, from the 6th century, 7th century onwards. The Israeli people were scattered over the world. They were victims of pogroms, of riots against them in Russia particularly, but in many other countries. And of course, during the Second World War, Hitler killed 6 million Jews. 6 million Jews were burned to death by Hitler, one of the greatest holocaust after that of the Hindus in the history of humanity. By the way, I want to say here that the only country in the world where Jews were not persecuted is India. The only country in the world where Jews were never persecuted and they came to India in the 6th, 7th century, mostly in Bombay and in Kerala, in Cochin, and there they lived peacefully, they were able to practice the religion peacefully, and most of them went back to Israel in 1948. So this is very important to say. So what I'm saying, Israel has lived a terrible, terrible, terrible karma. For what reason? I have no idea. There have been many speculations about it. I do not want to speculate on the speculations. You know, let people make their own opinion. But what the Dalai Lama says too is that a karma is burnt. When you suffer, you're burning the karma. So, so then the karma disappears. Suffering is the burning of the karma. So in the Buddhist and Hindu uh, sense of the world, you know, uh, looking at the world, there is no absolute injustice. The innocent people you see today suffering immensely, you know, most probably. And again, you know, I'm a Frenchman, I'm not a Hindu, I'm not a Buddhist, so I'm putting this in brackets, you know. There is no absolute injustice because the innocent people you see suffering today may be paying a past karma. So, Islamic terrorism uh, is a result of a karma. It's a result of a karma. No doubt, you know, Arab nations were, were, were exploited. And even, you see, the Gulf countries today who are so rich, you know, the Arab countries like Qatar and Saudi Arabia and Oman and others, today they're so rich because of petrol, you know. They were a very small country, exploited by the British, exploited by the French. You know, in the beginning, their petrol was exploited by the big multinationals like Shell and, and so many others. So today, they have taken control and they are, you know, there is an anger, they want to control the world. I'm thinking of Qatar particularly, which is a main sponsor of Islamic terrorism in the world today, uh, before Saudi Arabia even, uh, and has been known to channel funds to Hamas, you know. That is also a karmic consequence of the exploitation of the Arab nation. Nevertheless, I want to conclude my talk by saying, the greatest danger we face today, the greatest danger humanity faces today is Islamic terrorism. Because Islamic terrorism, in the name of the Quran, which was written long, long time ago, and may have been justified in those days, in medieval times, wants to take over the world in the most brutal manner. And it is fighting against the entire Western world, the entire civilized world, from China to France, you know, from, from, from Bhutan to everywhere. So we need to fight Islamic terrorism, karma or no karma. It is the duty of everybody to fight Islamic terrorism. Namaste.